Familia, there is so many people out there that are missing out on some great glute gains. But luckily for you, I'm here to dispel all the myths and show you what you need to do in order to absolutely grow that bunda of yours. Absolutely killer mistake number one is not tracking your workouts. And before you turn your nose at me, I want you to carefully listen to this. Can I have my mic? <laughs> now. Tracking is not something that a lot of people have to do it with the workouts, but it's recommended. The only reason why I say a lot of people have to do it is because some people get obsessed with tracking, okay? And, and that's also about calories and working out as well. But why does it help? Unfortunately, a lot of people get to the gym, they do a workout just for the sake of it. They tend to lift exactly the same weight as before, they barely break a sweat. Or even if they lift heavy, they lift the same amount of weight, the same amount of reps. And that is the problem. In order to grow muscle, we know that we have to progressively overload, which in simple, very, very simple genetic terms, it means that you have to improve over time, okay? So if you don't want to add more weight, you either can measure it by, for example, doing the same weight, but doing more reps of that weight, or even improving the form. Let's say, for example, if I'm doing a squat at the beginning, um, a lot of beginners will struggle with the range of motion, so they'll only go up until here. Let's say in a couple of more times, the, the range of motion improves and it can go deeper, etc., etc., and it can be applied to all the different exercises, basically. But the question here is that I want you to ask yourself if you get to the gym and you don't track your workout, and um, especially when you're a little bit more advanced, because for beginners it's a little bit easier to put on muscle, how are you gonna remember that last week you did? 10 reps of 80 kilos, for example, and now you need to do 11. That is a completely uh, random number, but just to make you aware of the difference in number and progression, okay? How are you gonna remember? Unless you have a great memory, and there is some people out there that can actually remember, or they can actually do it in terms of weight. They remember that they did 80 kilos three weeks ago, now it's ready to, they're ready to put 85 or something like this, okay? The point is, whether you track or not, what I want you to understand is, if you're not making progress with your workouts, chances are that you'll be staying the same, okay? Progressively overload, you have to either improve weight over time, and for this, you have to remember. Either improve the number of reps, and for this again, you have to remember what you did before, or the range of motion, which is obviously you can't really remember that much, unless you obviously track it, as you take pictures and do videos, which are also a method of measuring your progress. If you video yourself, for example, you can see that your form improved from now until three months ago, okay? So this is mistake number one that kills your gains, because a lot of people, especially more advanced people out there, I know that you do it, <laughs> they will they'll be stuck. And why did they plateau? Because they keep, they're so used to doing their program, they know what they're doing, they know their exercises, but they're not really pushing themselves anymore. And you know, I know that you are. So that is the whole point. And if you don't want to track and keep tracking of things and you don't have to do it all the time and you want to do a focused period of time where you really focus on improving and growing, then tracking, for example, is a very good point. You can do it on your notes as well. There is a free app that's called Strong and it's free to download and you can just track all your progress and it's just very easy or just simply remember, okay? And again, if you want me to help you and create a program for you so you don't have to worry about how many sets you have to do over time, how many reps you have to do and how many, how much weight you have to do over time because you don't like the thought of that. You just want to follow a plan, then link down below for one-to-one -one online coaching. I want to ask you a question at this point. Look at me. Are you running a marathon? Why are you bloody going so fast with your reps? Why are you going fast? Why are you going fast? The problem is when you go so fast with your weight, okay, chances are that one, you're picking a weight that is incredibly bloody light and you can do like 30 reps of it at least. And, and there is nothing wrong with training light because you can also train for the pump, okay, which is fine. And it's also a, a method of hypertrophy as well in other terms too. However, when you're going to the gym and you stick again to the same light weight, you don't control the weight, you have no control of the weight. What's the point of you going to the gym then at this point? If there is a machine that allows you to go and select heavier weight and to control the weight better, okay? Having that control also allows you to really focus on the targeted area of the muscle. So if we want to do like um, a booty workout or a leg workout, okay? It's better to slow down the tempo rather than going so fast. Like, where are you going? You don't even have to select a huge amount of weight. You can even select a moderate weight, to be honest, but slow down the movement. Really focus on engaging your glutes during a movement and slowing it down. This is called slowing down the time under 
attention will really help you make an exercise and feel that exercise even more in the targeted area. That is another thing that is killing, possibly killing your gains. Third, absolutely killer mistake that I know lots of you will do. You will nicely take a phone. A lot of you, lovely people will go on Instagram. I will see this person posting an exercise like the one that I showed you before. Okay, I see, oh, this looks great for the glutes. And indeed it is great for your glutes. It's a step up variation that I also posted about. But the problem is not in the exercise itself. The problem basically relates to the first problem that I told you before that is killing your gains, is the fact that once you see this exercise from person X on a certain week and then another week you see another exercise with person Y, you keep changing your bloody workouts. And you can't do that because if you keep changing your workout plans every single time, you can't progress the overload, you can't get better than you can't get stronger than you can improve with the reps, etc, etc, because you keep doing different exercises all the time. So if you want to take someone as an example, like for example, me, because I'm feeling great, my workouts are actually great, you can, but try to stick to these exercises for a long period of time so you can get stronger at them instead of copying first sex and then another one and then another one, because you will never grow this way. This is actually one of the most things that will kill your glute gains and any gains anyway as a matter of fact absolutely major killer mistake here a lot of people focus on things like squats deadlifts hip thrusts which are all compound movements and they're great okay great however you need to target your glutes from every single angle in order to experience the full potential of growth okay what does it mean glutes are composed of three different muscles we said we have the gluteus maximus medius and minimus so most of the compound exercises like squats and deadlifts will target the lower region which is also called the gluteus maximus neglecting the gluteus minimus and medius and i know that in a certain for to a certain extent these are all interlocked because they're connected muscles so they will have also some sort of engagement that will play and they will be engaged during these movements but it's also better to target your glutes from different planes and different angles to make the most of them okay so doing things like isolation exercises like this for example which is a simple um, exercise which will target the side but we say side because there's no such thing but it's so that people really understand what i mean will really help isolate this area so why are also glute isolation exercises so important like this one another reason is because a lot of people will have things like glute imbalances what does it mean that one size is bigger than the other so we'll tend to do things like lunges for example which is a single leg exercise right but wrong because by doing an exercise like lunges which is a compound because it's a compound exercise it will also target your quads your hamstrings and glutes so while you're fixing the glute imbalance that you have there you're also creating an imbalance with your quad or your hamstring Instead, things like this are more glute isolation and focus on the glutes more. They're perfect, for example, for things like this to fix this kind of issues. Understand? See or not? Another killer, absolutely unforgivable mistake is resting time. A lot of people don't rest enough. They just neglect it. They don't care about the resting time and why is it so important instead. Let's say that you do a heavy set. Like, you guys will have seen me. I like to eat heavy ass weight and um, I do 200 120 240 kilos hip thrust sometimes but I rest something like if I have if I do this right and I finish I rest at least minimum two minutes do you think if I rested like a minute I will be able to lift the same weight again or something heavier or similar anyway no so that's why you will have seen sometimes if you go to the gym you see some power lifters power lifters are the people that lift of weight okay you'll see sometimes that they have their they stand some people joke they say like oh you're standing there you can now as well have the chair next to you sit there sip your coffee and wait they have to wait a long time to rest and recover before hitting the next set because when you're lifting heavier and i encourage you all to lift a certain amount of weight in order to grow you have to rest enough okay if you don't lift heavy and like do things like 30 to 60 seconds rest is okay but if you do lift heavy which i encourage you to do because training for strength is also very important you have to rest long enough because if you rest long enough you'll be able to be stronger for the next sets of course as you go along with your workout you'll be stronger at the beginning and less stronger at the at the end this is inevitable but resting for a longer period of time helps anyway familia i hope you enjoyed these tips if you want me to coach you as well as familia and help you grow that massive boom as well and create a plan personalized for you and only you link down below for online coaching that means i help you with all this tip i really appreciate you giving me at least a like and subscribe okay anyway thank you so much for watching familia and see you next time with another video.